preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, for cheesecake, right, you don't really need to beat until it is like fluffy, like butter cake and stuff like that. You just want everything to be incorporated and dissolved, like the sugar to be dissolved. Like. Because it's too much, if we incorporate too much air, there will be too much air pockets later on and you'll have like very ugly, uh, large bubbles in the surface, which is not very nice. I added some vanilla extract into the measuring cup along with the eggs lah. and I'll beat them up before I actually add them gradually as I mix in. It's time to add in our marigold yogurt. So I'm using the non-fat one and I'm using the natural flavoured one. So I'm just going to add this in. Adding about 1 to 2 tablespoons of plain flour just to thicken everything up. So I'm just going to use my Beater, um, the hand mixer's beater to actually just incorporate the, the flour a little bit before I actually start making it. So that I will not, it will not be better for my plate. So today I'm just going to make it a little bit like a two layer. Uh, the base layer will be the white normal cheesecake base. And then the top layer, right, there will be a layer of the red velvet batter that has been tinted with red food colouring and cocoa powder. And then we'll finish it off with the stained marble so effect on the top. What I like to do, I'm a bit lazy and I want it to wait, so I will actually usually just take out one of the beater. I will just like, you know, mix it a little bit first, so that yes. it will not fluff up. Yeah, and then I will start with it. Uh, if you want, you can use freeze dried powder also to, to, to make it red. Strawberry la, all these la, works fine as well. But they will be a little bit different in terms of flavors la, so. If you don't have a piping bag, you can use the measuring cup, right? Gently pour over slowly, or you can use a ziplock bag also, and then after just use it as like a piping bag. Lah. Okay, for this recipe, right, Parmesan cheese is quite fair bit. 75 grams to be exact. If you are not really into Parmesan, that, that pungent aroma, you can actually reduce it by half. And um, about 100 grams of butter. And also, I have some herbs. So, uh, in the recipe, I stated one teaspoon of dried basil. But today, I'm using parsley. So, feel free to use whatever herbs you have at home or you could bowl up. Besides dry basil, can we use herb the Provence? I would say mix the fine. Rosemary, like, I don't recommend that it may, like, you know, get stuck in your teeth. Uh, things to take note is that the thickness of the biscuits, right, and also the thicky size, the uh, will affect your baking time. So adjust it accordingly. Uh, my oven is preheating at 180 degrees and I'll be baking it for about 10 minutes. But then let's say you're making a really big uh, biscuit, a really big scone, right? You may increase the baking time. If you're making really small ones, like uh, uh, a dollar coin kind of size, right? 10 minutes should be fine. I'm just going to quickly put in an hour for about 15 minutes. Ta -da! Today I'm using semi sweet chocolate which is about 5% and I find that it, it has the balance of uh, the sweetness and bitterness from the chocolate itself. If you're doing it in the microwave, right, you should do it at least on a medium power. Pause it every 20 seconds in the bowl. Like. You want to let this cool generally a little bit lah like, if you are doing this at home by yourself. But else you'll be adding some light brown sugar, which is about 170 grams of light brown sugar if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it should be enough. 
So you want next thing you have to add is cracking your eggs. You can do this two ways. One is to cracking one egg at a time, mix it thoroughly. Or another way is actually like me like that. Uh, put in a measuring jar and then beat them up. When you add them to the batter, right, you can just drizzle over while you stir lah. You don't want to actually add all of your eggs in, right? Most likely it will curdle but because the mixture is still warm and cook the egg really quickly if you are not mixing fast enough. And then here I have my dry ingredients, a uh, plain flour and cocoa powder. If you want uh, your brownie to be a little more cakey, you can add another two to three tablespoons of plain flour. Okay, what are the things that I I will usually see? Matcha powder, cocoa powder, icing sugar, uh, freeze dried powder. Those kind of food freeze dried powder. They lump up really quickly once they are exposed to air due to the humidity level and stuff. So those mix it. So uh, just use a whisk to mix it in. Mix it in a coffee emalpo. It's a little bit like a coffee syrup, coffee paste for baking. It adds a nice uh, coffee fragrance to your baking baking cups lah. Uh, if you don't have coffee in Malpo or coffee scrap, you can use instant coffee granulars. Not the two in one, not the three in one, the one that has pure dissolvable coffee ground uh, granulars. Uh. See, I have some Oreo. Uh, cookies and white chocolate, marshmallow, sprinkles, some chocolate chips. I actually melted some peanut butter with some milk in the microwave. Ground up peanuts. Things like cookie, Oreo, chocolate chips, peanut butter, or even if you want to put Nutella, Kaya, can be put before baking and baked together in the oven with the brownie. But things like things like marshmallow and sprinkles, right? Yes. You should add them after you finish baking. 